Hi, in this video we're going to be talking about the SPA, Remote Desktop Client, Host, and Console. So you could use this software to manage the computers in your network. Uh, if you don't want to use Remote Desktop, then it also comes in handy to connect to uh, Windows Home Edition computers where you can't use the actual Windows Remote Desktop Client. All right, so there's three components to it. There's actually more, but we're only going to be talking about three. So you have the client, which is what you use to connect to another computer. You have your console, where you can manage all of your connections. And on the other computer, which I have running here, you have the host. So you need to have the host running in order to connect to it. So this one right here that has the host on it is a Windows 11 Home. And then I have Windows 11 Professional that has the client and the console. So let's start over at the Windows 11 Home computer, which has the host. So once you install the host software, uh, you could configure it. So this will actually allow you to, let me go to the settings here. Uh, you could actually um, use a custom update server and put in router settings with the address and public key. So if you want to do this over the internet, you could do so. But we're just going to be talking about local network for now. So you have your general tab here, which we don't need to worry about. We just have the service started. That's all we care about, security. Uh, we're not going to worry about router. We're not using anything external. So we just mainly care about the user. So you want to add a user account. It doesn't have to be a Windows account that's on this computer. You could just make up a user if you want. If you want to call this you know, Joe Smith and put in a password, that's all you got to do. So once you put in the username and the password, you choose which uh, types of sessions you're going to allow. So you could manage the desktop or, or you could just view the desktop where you could watch them work, but you can't do anything. Uh, you could do a file transfer between the two systems. You could view system information or do a text chat. So I already made this user T Sims right here. That has everything allowed. So the user setup on the host, which is Windows 11 home, and it's running ready to go. So now let's go back over to the one with the client. So this one here, Windows 11 Pro, we have the console and the client. So the client looks just like this, where you put in the either the computer name or IP address of the computer you want to connect to, which in our case is Windows 11 Home. And then you can pick which type of session you want to run here. And then you have the settings where you could change things like enabling the audio clipboard, uh, change the codec, color depth, and these other options here. Okay, and then we also have the console. So once you have a bunch of computers, you could make a, a group here, or an address book, they call it. You could go to address book. Mine's called clients. I just have the one in here. Uh, you could do add computer, put in the name, where you want it to go, the address or the ID, and also configure the username and password so they don't have to, so you don't have to enter it in each time if you want to keep it. Then you have your management options here, your view options. So this one's already ready to go with the same uh, username and password that was configured over here. In this section here. Okay, so let's go back over to the one with the uh, console. Let's go to the console first here to show you how that works. Okay, so we have the computer name and of course you could do IP address as well. And so we're going to pick Desktop Manage, click on Connect. So since we're doing it from here, we've got to put in that name that we created over on the other side. The password. Like I said, this is not the Windows account. This is just the name and password we made for this connection. All right, so now we have control options. So we're able to control. And if we go to the other computer here that we're controlling, you can see it kills the uh, desktop background, which you could actually you know, leave it on if you want. And then you could also see that it's connected and then also kill it from here if, if you want to as well. Or pause it or stop it or just minimize it, get it out of the way like that. Okay, and then you also notice you have a little toolbar here, which you could pin. And then you could do things like, you know, paste keyboard, clipboard as keystrokes, change the scale, save screenshots, do recordings. And if you want to do some of the other options, like the system information, which I'll get to in a second. You can look at the task manager, do the chat, file transfer, uh, full screen, send control, alt, delete, power settings, 
change the resolution. Then you have options, the same options you saw before, and then unpin. And then when you're done, you just click on the X to get out of it, and you're back here. So, you know, there's the other options here. So the desktop view, which will be the same thing as desktop managed, except you won't be able to control it. you just be able to watch. Then we'll check out the file transfer. So we have the uh, local computer and the remote computer. So let's go to the desktop. Let's copy this over here, drag and drop. Let's go to the destination, which is our home computer here. And you can see we have the uh, file copied over there. And then it shows that we're doing file transfer mode as well. Then when you're done, just close it out. Then you have the system information. which kind of comes in handy, you know, if you want to see all the information here about what's going on on the destination computer, even the user accounts, check the last login, number of logins. Like that. And finally, we have the text chat. And if we go over to the uh, destination computer, we got it listed right there. And that shows it down there again, what's going on. Like so. All right, so now you notice I've been putting in the name and password each time I want to do one of these things. So this is where the uh, console comes in handy because once you store the name and password, you could just click on what you want to start here. Desktop manage view, file transfer, text chat, system information. So let's say system information and just double click it and it goes right there and logs in. You don't have to put in the name and password. So if you're going to be managing a bunch of computers and you don't mind, you know, keeping the name and passwords in your software here, uh, you could just do it that way. And as long as the host is running on them, you could just connect to them at any time and just run whatever feature you want here. You could delete, modify, copy, add, you can also make groups, properties, update, fast connect, save all, like that. So once again, for your connecting computer, you're going to need the client to connect to it. And then you could also install the console so you could have all your computers listed here so you could easily uh, connect to them at any time and also keep the name and password so you don't have to type it in. And on the destination computer, you're going to need the host. And you just pretty much need to configure, make sure the service is started, and add your user account with the name and password, and that's all you got to do. So there's a separate download for each component, you know, the client, the host, and the console. So I'll put a link where you can download them all. And this also works for Linux as well, so if you want to manage your Linux computer, so we might actually do a video on that as well, just to show you how that works. So I'll put a link in the description for this, and then you could uh, try it out for yourself. All right, thanks for watching, and be sure to subscribe. Thank <laughs> you.